had the most amazing trip ever. I explored Uist and Harris and Lewis. It was just such a beautiful place. And the people were amazing. It was just lovely, the peace and quiet. It made me realize that I wouldn't tolerate that kind of behavior ever again. Anila and I have been coming to the Hebrides for almost 20 years. And it's always a place of, of comfort. It's always very soothing to be here. It's, it's medicine for us both. When things had really got tough for Anila and she just had to go and ride and prove to herself that she was capable and get lost in this environment, it became even more important because when she came back, she was a new woman. I wouldn't say she was cured, she's still cranky, but it's always going to be a special place for us. my first experience of having to sleep rough, um, you know, not shower, eat, eat off a stove, midges. <laughs> I mean, it, it, seemed, it seemed pretty kind of standard in a lot of ways for me because I was used to doing that kind of stuff, but if you cast your mind back, you were never, you were never it? into the outdoors as a kid or even as a teenager or you were never even into riding bikes. I was a city girl. So it's also about culture as well. The culture that I was brought up in told me that I wasn't to participate in sport or go out and play as much as my brother. He had this wonderful old chopper that I have a vivid memory of him giving me a, a go because the seat was so long that he could just give me a backy on the bike and he would just take me up and down the street. <laughs> <laughs> on the pavement and it was just so much fun. So that was the only the only memory I had of of riding bikes. <laughs> so yeah, this picture reminds me of home and one of the things we all love doing is watching TV. TV was a big part of growing up and but one thing that really struck me was actually never seeing anybody like myself or like my mum or my brother or sister and when there ever was uh, a black or brown face we would be like oh look check there's somebody <laughs> somebody that looks like us and I think there was a real absence of people of colour on you know when we were growing up obviously my school it was predominantly white the books that I read the history, that we, it was almost like my story, my mother's story was, was not there. Um, and I was reading somebody else's story. So there wasn't, we weren't visible anywhere. There wasn't a presence of people of color. So, you know, think about how that makes you feel that you don't have this position in life. You're constantly looking for you, but, but you don't see it. It's really hard to talk about your background, your your identity, your, your colour. I hate even saying the words, the colour of your skin. It's It still makes me feel uncomfortable um, um, because it, it's something that I've grappled with over, over the years. I found another picture of me at school. It's me playing with the ropes. I remember Suzanne call me Paki. These things don't ever leave you, you know, when people bring you down or they belittle you. You don't ever forget those experiences and I can 
remember every single experience based on my difference, my my colour that has made me upset, uh, made me sad to to be who I am because of the way somebody's judged me. When I became a teenager, I think I started to think differently about who I was and didn't really want to be a didn't really want to be Pakistani. <laughs> so. <laughs>absolutely no grounding in the outdoors and that all changed when as a teenager I did an outward bound course it was one of the most important memorable experiences of my life ever and then mountain bikes emerged it's become one of the most vital things in my life and thankfully in Anila's life too I met this boy and uh, he asked me to go for a bike ride with him only thing I remember is this like really steep shoot <laughs> that you took me down and I was just so happy that <laughs> by the end of it I was still alive. <laughs> that sense of fear and excitement at the same time, I loved it. Yeah, you introduced me to a whole new world of the outdoors. When I had the lots for you, I never even thought about the fact that you were a different colour or what that meant or could mean. It was just sheer chemistry. And I realised that there was a racial dimension to life that I was oblivious to. Seeing firsthand the things that you experienced, the hurt, the anger. Obviously, when you care about someone, you then hurt, you become angry, you want to defend. I work in an open plan office and there's a manager who worked in a private office and he'd call me in every day to have conversations about my ethnicity, my colour of skin that made me feel uncomfortable, that made me question my own identity because he always made me feel different, always made me feel like I was this other thing that didn't really fit in society. Um, it's almost like he did look down upon me constantly and the only reason for that was because of his view about people of colour. The fact that somebody just ate away at me every day and, um, and I was so unhappy and I was so unhappy and I, my Colleagues knew, but we used to just laugh it off. And I just felt so helpless because I didn't know that I could actually do anything about it. I lacked the confidence. I didn't feel like I wanted to be me because this person made me feel so small and different. And the fact that he had these conversations with me every day for seven years, almost. <laughs> um, it took me to breaking point.
And I knew where I wanted to go. I knew where the only place that would make me feel good and make me have that headspace was the Hebrides. Bombproof. I've known her almost 26 years and there's not much phases her huh? but I watched piece by piece over many years just subtle erosion of her confidence. She couldn't even believe herself. Was she was was this racism or was she been too sensitive because this is her expertise, this is her specialism. Am I overreacting or am I really on the receiving end? And when we started to look at all the examples, the text messages she was receiving, the bullshit that she was enduring day to day, and the fact that Anila, who loves her work and going to work, she was walking on eggshells and coming home wrung out and tearful on an almost daily basis. And to see somebody go from being bulletproof to questioning herself, her own identity. It started to affect who she was. How could she go to work every single day and stand up for people and human rights and, and justice when she was on the receiving end? The Hebrides is a place where I felt safe and I knew that I could meet people, I could camp. All I had to focus on was where I was going to sleep and what I was going to eat, <laughs> where I was going to eat and all these things are actually were really exciting. Just think about the journey ahead. Me, my bike and my bike bags and my map and, and that was me. That's all I needed. You know, these were my new worries that would replace all the horrible stuff that I'd left behind. Oh, that's happening! <laughs> oh my god! It's the coldest hand that run down this land where the ocean lands. It's the tallest sound, the damn smallest crowd. But their hearts break loud Far from ever feeling lost with me I'll push you back towards the land and sea They're going down for love and love is free Stick with me and I will guarantee One thing about the trip that really did it for me was the people, the people in the, in the Hebrides. Strangers. I talked to strangers and I met so many lovely people. Like when I stayed in this hostel and this chap who was a fisherman, 
We were the only two in the hostel. In my head, I was like, no, I'm not going to be able to have a conversation with him. And then he showed me how to gut fish. And we had this conversation about my family and my heritage. And it was lovely just to talk to strangers about who I really am. I've never done that before. Never talked about my ethnicity and, and how proud I am of my, of my culture because I've been hiding from it for so long. Sometimes I feel disgusted at myself for the fact that I've done that, but I can't stress how much it's made me so happy about being who I am. Thank God for bikes <laughs> and places like this. Well, this is, I mean, um, you know, you might laugh at me, but this place really did save me. No, I know. I know you came back. I came back feeling brilliant and, and ready to challenge and do something about it, and I did. I did. It did take me a long time to get there, but I, I did, and wow, what a lease of life since then. These conversations, I didn't hide my difference. You know, we were celebrating difference and sharing our stories together. And these conversations really renewed my faith of people. And when I came back from my trip, I felt confident again. I felt confident with who I am and knowing that I need to challenge inappropriate behaviour and I need to call it out. And that's what I did. I took a grievance out and I made sure that this is something that I wouldn't want anybody to go through. Not just me, but anybody. I always knew that I wanted to go into a career where I would know I, I was changing people's lives for the better. Mountain biking's kind of the heart of so much of what she is. She recognises what mountain biking's done for her in terms of her own self-confidence, leadership. It's given so much to her and, and, and she in turn wants to show others that it can be that for them too. So since the Hebrides, I've reevaluated what I want to do in life and I took the decision to bring my passion of mountain biking and diversity and inclusion together. Mountain biking is what I love, it's what I do and I just want to make it, make it better for everyone. When you look at the face of mountain biking, it's predominantly white, male, middle class. Racism exists in society. So when we say that there's no racism in mountain biking, you know, what are we really saying there? Are we saying that they are, that's completely different from the rest of society? I mean, when was the last time that you saw any black or brown faces on bikes in the media or in the industry? Just because they've got a person of colour on a feature about diversity in mountain biking or cycling. People will come on and say, oh, I'm unsubscribing, you know, what's this got to do about bikes? <laughs> it's like, well, it's got everything to do about bikes. I think whenever those kind of voices start to dominate, we need to all call it out and say, look, you know, you're not exactly in a strong position to be commenting on whether there should or shouldn't be more black and brown voices and faces within this sport. I love this whole notion of allyship and having allies. And, you know, when we do raise an issue, a concern about, you know, racism or some kind of discrimination, you know, others speak up now as well in the mountain bike world. And I think it's just incredible. Why shouldn't everybody have the opportunity? And I think understanding why it's white and it's male and it's middle class is important. My job is to facilitate um, and support organisations creating that inclusive environment that everybody benefits from, not just the people that are experiencing the barriers, but everybody together. Everybody deserves the opportunity to experience this. It's not just riding bikes, mountain biking's more than that. Coming to places like this, it's more than that. 
it is life changing. It's just been non-stop since I took that decision. Constantly striving to promote an inclusive organisational culture. And you are. Yeah. I've been able to give that expertise to brands, to cycling organisations, to friends that work in the mountain bike industry. And it's just incredible how we've got together and actually <laughs> been able to collaborate and do some amazing things. And hopefully we get to a point where we don't even need to talk about this anymore. It just, we can normalise that difference in such a way that you open a magazine and you'll see people of colour, you'll see disabled people, women, men. It just becomes normal. That's where we want to be. That's the, the end goal and that's my passion. And yeah, it's, it's a, an exciting time. Coming back here, I feel like a completely different person to what I was when I came here in 2017. I feel proud of myself. I feel like I've got a voice that I never knew I had. I'm really proud of my heritage and the colour of my skin. I'm actually talking about race, the impact of, of racism in society, but now I want to, I want to shout about it and and change the world I do I want to change the world another galaxy hold me close I want to feel your love together we are free just be with me just be with me just be It took something really terrible to happen to Anila and I wish it never did, but it's made her into the woman that she's become. It's given her so many more opportunities. It's really defined what she will just not tolerate anymore. Whoever was stupid enough to cross her back in 2017 Thank you very much. You've done her and me a massive favour. You complete <laughs> hole. Thank you for writing over racism. 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 Thank you for Thank you for writing over racism. And thank you for helping me be comfortable in my beautiful brown skin. Thank you for standing up to racism. Can't, can't hear me. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello?